Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today I'm gonna be showing you how I made this little rocking chair out of cardboard and other household items. Thank you again to Paula for making the digital files that you guys can find in the description box below to help you follow along with this tutorial. This one goes along with my bedroom suit tutorial, so if you wanna check that out, I will have the link to that video in the description box as well. To get started, you're going to need the pattern and you're going to need to cut out the pieces as marked. So this first one is out of one layer of cardboard. The second piece here is two layers of cardboard that are glued together. This third one is made from one layer of chipboard and I have the definitions of these materials written on screen for you. And this piece is also made from one layer of chipboard. The next two pieces are made from cardboard and make sure you check on the pattern the way that the corrugation is supposed to run so that the pattern works correctly. Make sure you use a sharp knife when you cut these out. There are several pieces of long chipboard rectangles and just make sure you cut them out according to the pattern. You will also need several q-tips or cotton swabs and you may not need all nine but it's good to make sure that you have several um, just so that you have enough to finish the pattern. And as an option, you can also use a piece of paper towel that has some kind of pattern on it. We are going to start out with these four pieces that when combined are going to create the back of the rocking chair. Again, the paper towel is optional. I have them laid out in the order that we're going to glue them together, but the first thing you want to do is grab the second piece that is made from chipboard and start to bend and break the cardboard at the top above the dotted line. This is because I am going to kind of curl this piece down and create a I guess it's more, it's like a curved back to the rocking chair. This is just an extra little detail that I think gives the piece some interest. I curved it over a pencil first, and then I'm using my fingers to roll it down into a very small curl. Once I have it how I like it, I'm just going to add a bead of hot glue and then push the cardboard onto itself so that the curl holds. If you don't think you want the curl, all you have to do is cut that top section off. Here's how it looks when it's finished. This piece is going to sit on top of the cardboard piece and the bottom of the curled piece should line up with the dotted line you see on the pattern. There's a line right there and that should stay open so that you can add glue for the seat of the chair. I'm now going to add the chipboard piece onto the cardboard piece making sure that I have it all lined up. I am also going to add some glue right underneath the rolled piece and push it onto the cardboard piece so that it's all connected. I'm now using the cutout chipboard that has the little decoration in the center to mark out where I am going to have to put my paper towel. The paper towel is going to be kind of an inlay and so the only reason I marked where it was is so that I made sure I could see the inlay through the piece that I'm going to put on later. I'm putting on quite a bit of glue here because I want it to hold the pattern in the paper towel. This doesn't quite work out in the end. It might work with some other types of paper towels, but for mine, it does wrinkle. I thought maybe adding a lot of glue would, it would kind of hold its shape and not wrinkle, but it does wrinkle in the end and I'm still okay with it. You might be able to find some kind of pattern paper that would work better for this, but since I'm trying to use household materials, I thought I'd try it out with a paper towel. Once I have it glued down, I can cut off the excess so I don't have any paper towel hanging over the side. Now I'm going to take the decorative piece, add some glue, and glue it on top of the paper towel. This is why I made a pattern with it earlier to make sure the paper towel went all the way on all the sides so that it would be covered up when I put this piece on at the end. Once it's glued on, you will see that there's a slight gap at the top and we will smooth that out a little bit later with some joint compound. The bottom of this decorative piece that's on the very top of the paper towel should line up with that dotted line at the bottom just like the previously rolled chipboard piece did. The reason for this gap, this is where we are going to glue the seat of the rocking chair. 
I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue and then the seat should fit perfectly right in there and this is creating the bulk of our chair already. I am holding mine at a slight angle while it glues just to give it that lean back look. Now I'm going to be creating the arms. For this I'm going to need one of those small pieces with the corrugation in the center and three q-tips. I'm going to cut off the cotton swab part of the q-tip and for this I'm using my easy cutter which I will leave a link to in the description box below if you're interested in one of those. You don't need one to complete this project, you can just use an X-Acto knife. I am now looking for the three centermost corrugation openings in this arm. Now I'm going to be adding a little bit of glue and inserting the cutoff part of the q-tip into those openings, making sure that it lines up with the top. This is starting to create the arm of the rocking chair. I'm going to let that dry and then add another bead of glue into the next available opening that's on the same side of the corrugation. So it will look like there's a spot in between um, but you can kind of play around with it and decide how far apart you want your supports. Once you see how it goes together, you can kind of adjust this design to your own liking. Once I have all three pieces inserted, I take the nose of my glue gun and run it over the top to make sure that I don't have any glue sticking up over the edge. Now I want my arm of my rocking chair to be about an inch tall, so I am going to cut off the q-tip pieces at an inch from the top of the arm. I wrote on your pattern how much you need to cut them uh, from the very beginning, so you really won't have to follow this step if you pre-cut your q-tips, um, but you can do it any way you want. Now I'm checking it against the body of the chair, and I'm trying to figure out how far I want my arms to stick out. So where my thumbnail is, is where I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to make sure I make two of these as close to each other as possible so they look like a matching pair. The next step is to take the two chipboard pieces that are in the arm section of your pattern. Mine is just one piece because I'm cutting them to size. Yours should be sized correctly on your pattern if you follow similar steps like I do. But what you're going to do is put that on top of the arm, so on top of the corrugation, away from the supports, and you should have a piece sticking over the end. What we're going to do with this is roll it up similar to the way we did on the back of the rocking chair. This is kind of finishing out the design and making our rocking chair look a little fancier than it actually is. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I'm going to add some glue to the very top of the arm, glue down the chipboard piece, and then I can re-roll the curl on the end and then glue it to the very end of the armchair so that I have basically a curl sitting right on the end of the arm. I eventually will be filling this with joint filler so I don't mind that I can see through the roll at the moment. I'm also adding a little angle on the back of the arm so that it angles in towards the back of the rocking chair. This is also optional, it just depends on how you want your rocking chair to look. And now I have one completed arm. I'm going to follow the same exact steps for the other arm except I'm angling that cut that I did in the opposite direction. To attach it, I'm using hot glue again, and I'm making sure that my arms, kind of the Q-tip, the bottom of the Q-tips kind of hit a halfway point on the chair. And this is just so I can get some joint compound all around them. Now we're going to make the actual rockers for the rocking chair. There are three pieces for each rocker, two short and one long. First you want to glue the two short pieces made from chipboard together, and then you want to glue the one long piece on the bottom. After you have those all glued together, you want to do the next steps before they dry. It's important to do this before the glue in between each layer dries. So as you can see, I have the two shorter pieces glued on top of the one longer piece. 
I'm now taking some kind of circular form. For me, I'm using this masking tape roll, and I am going to tape the ends of the long piece so that it's kind of smashing the two shorter pieces against the tape roll. Once I have them taped down, I'm going to leave them alone for it to dry. This is what's going to create our rocking chair rockers. I think that's what they're called. So I have the longer piece on the outside and the shorter pieces on the inside. I'm making two of these. Once they're dry, I'm just going to tape one end to make sure that it holds its shape. If it holds its shape, then it should be completely dry and ready to work with. Don't undo these too soon because then you may lose your rocker shape. I'm going to take the ends of the longer pieces that should be sticking out still and roll them in like we have on the other design parts of the chair. This is just going to make our rockers look a little bit more fancy. I roll both ends and then add a little bit of glue to hold those rolled ends in place. And now we have one rocker. Do the same thing for the second one so that you have two identical rockers for your rocking chair. I have put a measurement on your pattern for how long you need to cut the legs if you want it to be similar to mine, but you're more than welcome to try and figure that out on your own if you want a shorter or slightly taller rocking chair. After I have the legs cut, I am poking into that bottom layer of cardboard and continuing to make the hole larger and larger until my Q-tip pieces fit. Then I just add a little bit of hot glue into each hole and put the Q-tip pieces into the holes. Then while they're drying, I make sure to check from each side so that they match their angle and how they're sitting on the chair. I do the same thing for the front parts of the chair, and you can kind of figure out what angle you want them to be at. I think there's a fine art in how to make a rocking chair work, because as you will um, see in a little bit, this one didn't really work on the first try, but I will show you how I fixed it. So now that I have my legs on the chair, I'm checking them with the rocker positions and you won't see it on the video, but I do take a pencil and lightly mark where I want the legs to meet up with the rocker so that I can glue them while the rocker is face down on the tabletop. To attach the rockers, I'm just going to add a small bead of glue and I'm going to do one side at a time. So I'm starting with the right side of the chair, lining it up and gluing the legs onto the tops of the rockers, making sure that they are in the correct spot and centered in the middle of the rocker. Once that's done, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, trying to make sure they match as much as possible. Now you can check and see if your rocker will stay upright. Uh, mine did not. I'm not quite sure how they do this in real life, but mine ended up being very top heavy. So at this point I decided I had a problem to try and solve. Even though this is made out of cardboard and very lightweight materials, um, there is a balance issue when it comes to making rocking chairs. So in order to fix this, I decided to add some metal nails to the front part of the rocking chair. Another thing you can do is kind of cut a hole and put coins. I've done that in miniatures before. I've put coins to offset when um, the weight is not dispersed correctly. This happens when you're using abnormal materials to make what is usually a full size object. It just happens sometimes. What I'm doing here is just adding nails into the corrugation at the front of the chair until it does eventually agree to sit up most of the time. As you can see, I ended up putting maybe nine or 10 nails into the chair by the time I was done. The other thing I decided to do was to add some Q-tip stoppers to the back of the rockers. This is another option you have if you don't want to put nails into your rocking chair. They're just basically little speed bumps, <laughs> I guess I would call them. And their function here is basically to keep the rocking chair from rocking back too far and falling over. And it does keep your chair from having that nice full rock, but it does rock forward still, and I was happy with it, so I moved on. 
The last thing I need to do is add support between the two rocker sides so that it doesn't eventually do the splits at some point. So I put a q-tip in between the two sides, measured and marked with a pencil, and then cut them at a slight angle so that it would work right in between the two pieces. I just add a dollop of glue on each end and then put it in between the two front legs of the chair. I do the exact same thing for the back of the chair and I don't worry about too much if it's at the exact same height because honestly it'll be fine either way. It won't look weird if it's not. So I have one between the two front legs and one between the two back legs. That's it for the basic construction of the chair. Just like every other chair or every other piece of furniture I've made in the cardboard house, I wanna put some little punch out decorations on them. I thought bats would be really cool for Mrs. Periwinkle or Miss Periwinkle. I'm not quite sure her backstory yet, um, but she, uh, I'm sure, loves all winged creatures. So I wanna put bats on this rocking chair. I'm now going to do the same thing I've done before where I'm going to take some all-purpose joint compound and I'm going to fill in any of these gaps that you are seeing from the cardboard corrugation. This is also going to cover up any place that I put the nails in and all in all it's just going to give this chair a little bit more of a cohesive look. I'm also going to be filling in a lot of those loops so it looks like a solid carved chair, possibly made from wood. I'm making sure to be really careful around the arm supports and get all around them so that they look like they're integrated into the chair. I also made sure to go over this gap that was created at the very top of this chair so that it all looks smooth. Once the joint compounds dry, I'm going to give it a really good sand before moving on to the next step. If you've been following along, you know that what I call the mixture is actually a mixture of joint compound that I'm using now, plus Elmer's glue or some kind of white PVA glue. I do a 50-50 mixture, but if you want it more thick, you can add more joint compound. If you want it more thin, you can add more of the glue. I've found that using a paintbrush makes the mixture go on in a really thin coat, and it is helpful because you get to see a lot of the detail that we created with the punch outs. It's this step that's really going to strengthen our little chair that's made out of cardboard and paper products. And um, I just really like following this process. As you guys know, it's what I've done from the very beginning on the house. And it's even translated really, really well to the furniture. Make sure to get all over everything. And I end up doing two coats of the mixture on this chair. I'm going to paint this piece to match the bedroom furniture, even though the bedroom is, um, it may be not in the bedroom, but I think a rocking chair is a great thing to have in your bedroom. So I'm painting it to match that set. My painting process for that was a base coat of black and then another coat of brown. This makes it a very, very dark chocolatey brown. And then I do a dry brush of a lighter brown on top of that to give it some wood grain look and maybe even like an aged look to it. It's after that step that I decide how I'm going to paint the paper towel piece. Now up to this point, the paper towel had kind of kept its own pattern and I was thinking this was going to work, but it's during this step that it really starts to wrinkle. What I do is I paint it with a base coat of brown and then I dry brush a lighter tan on top of it. Here you can see the wrinkles. Like I said, um, I'm okay with it. I, I actually like how it turned out, but you might be able to find some pattern paper that would work better. And then I also did some gold details on the little bats so that they stand out. So that's all I have for you guys today. This cute, sweet, little, simple rocking chair. Remember to tag me on Instagram at Bentley House Minis. If you create this rocking chair, I always love to see what you guys come up with. I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.